Thank you so much for taking the time to hear the powerful word of truth from Prophet Bishop H. Walker. By way of special announcements, join Prophet Walker at True Life Pentecost Church every second Sunday of each month in Atlanta, Georgia at 957 Metropolitan Parkway at 4.30 p.m. Also join in with True Life every fourth Sunday of each month in Charlotte, North Carolina at 300 North Tryon Street located at the Public Library of Charlotte. For further details, go to www.truelightpentecost.org and click on announcements for any current events. Thank you so much for supporting Prophet Walker and the True Light Ministry. Be encouraged and be blessed. You are now viewing Prophet H. Walker and True Light Pentecost Church. Those that are viewing and seeking after righteousness, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So therefore, it's not a sin to them. Why? Because they have been raised up and they identified with it for so long, it becomes a common thing. When God separates his church, he takes away from that common thing so he can get this the real thing. Yes. And this is why separation is a part of the Bible. And I pray God get mad at you.
about a separated people and I also made mention to you that blessings cannot come to you except through obedience. I also tried to explain that obedience is a rule that establishes a principle. When the principle of right and wrong is established, then the rule is written in the Bible as a living testimony. Note in the tablet right in the book that it might be for the time to come forever. Now, this is commonly called a doctrine, which means teaching or instruction. When the Bible teaches us and gives us a rule of principle, it's for a specific reason. And that reason, again, is for you to identify with yourself whether or not you are a follower of that which is right. So again, if you see here in the book of 2 Corinthians, it says in, in verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? Now again, that word yoked means you, you can't physically marriage, Amen. be married to someone who is not in the church. Amen. All right. But it also means that you can't be spiritually connected with someone who's not in the church. Amen. If they uh, have a ba Baptist uh, ideology and you are holding steadfast to the apostles' doctrine, you got a conflict right there. So the Bible calls it unequally yoked. Now the word unequal means it can't, you can't come together. All right. So the word of God separates his church. So you can't get mad at the preacher when the preacher tells you to come out and be separate because that's what the word says. God is trying to establish a people that will reflect him, a people that will stand for his word, that other people who are seeking after truth can know that there is a way. You can't, if you don't have nobody standing up for righteousness, how is somebody who's looking for righteousness, how are they going, what, where is the example? Amen. Where is who? Who can they look up for an example? So again, the church of God has got to be for real. Amen. The church of God has to first have some courage to defend the truth when the truth comes. You can't waver. You can't always be a baby. All right. Amen. Sometimes you got to stand up Amen. and be counted. And we're in a damn time. I say to the YouTube viewers, you, you got to be counted. You got to stand up now and be counted. Amen. And the remnant church is being formed right now. When God gets through shaking, all of this foolishness is going to fall by the wayside. And those who are for real will stand up and be counted. Thereby, those who are, who are not for real or uh, who will not be a part of us equally or in the spirit of unity, Amen. it identifies itself. Amen. So here, uh, Paul gives a tough teaching. Be not unequally yoked to uh, the spirit of unbelief. And he it it tells you why. <laughs> for what? Verse 14, for what? Be not unequally yoked together. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have life with darkness? And what concord have Christ with Belial? Or what part have he, have he that believeth with Now, all the through these uh, derivatives, he's trying to explain to you why you can't be unequally yoked. Right. First of all, he tells you uh, what, 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 what fellowship have righteousness with a sinful life. 
Next he goes and says, what communion has light with darkness. Mm -hmm. Communion means identity. Yeah. So you can't identify with someone who's not for real, someone who's not in the faith. You don't have any identity with them. It's totally two different qualities of character. So the character of the church can only be reflected through people who are in the church. Amen. If I'm in the church and you see me smoking and drinking, well, there's something, something wrong here. What church am I in? How do I identify with a holiness church if I'm doing what God tells you not to do? Of course, smoking ain't in the Bible, but if I say it's wrong, it's wrong. Amen. But I do know drunkards in the Bible. Amen. And the Bible says a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So I want to say to that person who emailed me, uh, Jesus drank wine. But again, you, you're not studying. You're, you're making yourself look foolish. Amen. God said a drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. If wine makes you drunk, how did Jesus drink wine and then condemn you to hell for doing the same thing? All right, all right. So you have to understand, you got to put the Bible in its right perspective. Jesus drank unfermented wine, which we call grape juice today. But the fermented beverage, they call it wine today. But in that dispensation of time, all of it was called wine. I believe in the New Testament, uh, when you get into the fermented beverage, it was called new wine. That's why Peter made that statement on the day of Pentecost when they say, oh, man, these people, they, they drunk. And Peter said, no, they ain't been drinking no new wine. Right. They ain't been drinking that fermented stuff. Right. Amen. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost yes. that's Amen. made them act like they're acting. And when the Holy Ghost gets on you right, you won't act a little bit strange. Amen. The people Amen. who don't know how to act strange. All right, <laughs> All right I went back into Genesis. The importance of receiving your blessing. Now, this is important. Everybody on this earthly journey will need a blessing mm -hmm. sooner or later. Yes. When well, I'm speaking about blessing, I'm talking about some type of divine intervention, whether it be through a sickness, whether it be a financial blessing, whether it be uh, something in your home, in your household, yes. or on the job. Supervisors on the job are not safe. Yes. So when they come after you, you're going to need you some help because you can't. What you going to do yourself? You can't say, oh, no, you're wrong. You, can, you don't treat me like that. No, you, you, you be looking for a way out the door. Mm -hmm. You got to stand back then and hold your peace mm -hmm. and do what? Let God fight you back. Mm -hmm. So again, if I'm living all I know for God and I'm not allowing for someone to come along and whisper in my all ear right. foolishness yes. Amen. and I've separated myself from that, then I become a vessel unto the Lord. And if I'm a vessel unto the Lord, God can use me. But if God can use me, then God has to do something for me. Since I can't fight the supervisor, I can't fight that one, I can't fight the other one, but God, you can. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. He said he'll make your enemies your footstool. Yes. And God will do just that. Them people who are scheming and plotting right now against true life. Yeah. All right. Be careful. That's right. Amen. 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 All right. You can ask them to pray. Amen. All right. Would you pray for me? Amen. Didn't Aaron mm -hmm. tell the prophet yeah. after he saw the hand of God against those who would come against his church? Pray for me. None of these things come against me. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, you've got to establish a credibility with God, and it can only be done through a knowledge that is found and recorded in the scripture. All right. In Genesis, I want to pick up in, in uh, chapter 13. Look in verse, uh, I'm trying to, uh, uh, I don't want to read all this, but pick up in verse 7. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled there. Now, strife the means they couldn't get along. Right, right. Arguing and fussing and talking about each other. Read. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. I'm tired of this heart. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of this confusion. You know, sometimes when God works this thing out, yes. and he takes, he removes certain conflict and certain confusion from the church. You notice you get a peaceful Don't have as many, but you got 
a certain peacefulness. Amen. Yes. Confusion cannot disguise itself only with us. Amen. But confusion can never disguise himself with God. Because yeah. he said, I search the heart of an individual. Yeah. I know your thoughts. Tomorrow. I know what you're thinking tomorrow. And tomorrow he didn't come. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Church, watch this now. Read. And between my hermit and thy hermit, for we be brethren, is not the whole land before thee. We are brethren. Why are we fussing? Fight? Yes. Amen. Because it got to be some separation. Mm -hmm. Somebody's heart ain't right. Mm -hmm. All right. We prove by scripture Lot's heart was not right. Mm -hmm. Even though he was with Abraham and was a relative of Abraham, which means he was a part of the Israelite family or community, Lot's heart was not right. And Lot had to do a whole lot of repenting in order to get right and in order for Lot to repent and prove it, there had to be a proof within himself. Read. Is there is it not the whole land before thee? Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. You say, I pray thee. Yeah. He, he won't have that mess. Yeah. Okay. In a hurry. Yeah. He said, I pray. Yeah. You take, take what's ever on the left, I'll take what's on the right. If you go to the right, I'll take what's left. In other words, you just pick out the best land. And we're going to show that Lot picked out the best land. Pick up in verse... Uh, the next verse. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, mm. that, it, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Water everywhere. Green yeah. grass for your flock. Praise God. Read. Even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoe. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves to walk from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. He pitched his tent towards Sodom. Amen. Now, if you would go back to verse 19, Amen. or go forward to chapter 19, pardon me, you will find that Lot sat in the gate of that city. Amen. Somewhere along the line, Lot elevated himself as a in a position of authority in Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. Now, did he know that that was a sinful city? Let me tell you something. Sometimes you can be around sin so much and so often until you really don't know that you're around sin. Amen. That's why you see people wearing the makeup and the lipstick and say, wonder why they, why they when the Bible speak against them. Amen. Brothers and sisters, because they've been caught up in sin so long, Amen. So there goes to the Baptist church, everybody got lipstick yep. and, and, and makeup and earrings and high heel shoes and all that. Everybody. So therefore, it's not a sin to them. Why? Because they have been raised up in it. They identified with it for so long, it becomes a common thing. When God separates his church, he takes away from that common thing so he can get the real thing. Yes. So this is why separation is a part of the Bible. And I... Pray God, get mad at me all you want, but I know what God is saying. When you're not separated from those who are not of us, then pretty soon you will be like them and not like us. Right. Amen. Amen. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And Lot did not catch hold to what was taking place. I, I can tell by balancing the scripture. Lot was not a Sodomite. Amen. I don't believe his wife was a lesbian. Amen. But you can't never tell about his wife for one thing. She left something back there. Amen. The test God gave them, I'm going to deliver you from this wickedness. Now, not never identify with the wickedness until God opened up his eyes. When the two angels came to Lot and the men surrounded the door and knocked on the door and told Lot, we want them young men. We want to know them, which meant in the spiritual connotation, they want to have sex with them. Amen. That's why Lot said, no, 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 don't do this. There's something about these men. I don't think he knew they were angels, Amen. but something about those men, he knew that they were messengers from God. Because right. they were in a human body. But there was something about the way they carried themselves to let not, not know they are different than the other men of the city. Amen. They didn't walk like them. Amen. 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 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Amen. Amen. Now, Amen. when Lot realized, we want to know that, Lot said, I have two virgin daughters. Take them. Now, by him identifying the daughters, female, no man had touched. You're showing that there had to be some type of sexual right. uh, 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 mm -hmm. view that the men of Sodom had toward those two angels, mm -hmm. though they didn't know they were angels. Take these two beautiful young girls. No. Man, they, they jump over a statue of Beyonce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. You know, that's something. Huh? Yeah. 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 Say what you want about Beyonce, but she <laughs> 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 No. When God made his men, he made his men. I look, but I don't want to look too much. I'm going to keep on going. Amen. 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 That's all with me. That's why I see you can't watch everything on television. All right. It'll cause your discipline to have a slippage. And then foolish things come in. Foolish fantasies come in. All right. Next thing you know, you start thinking. And thinking pretty soon, you can thank yourself right on out to church. All right. Now I realized that there's something wrong. Offer them the daughters. No, we want them men. And God had to do something strong to get those sodomites' attention. Don't, don't, you know, don't come too far. Don't push too much. This is what they're doing today. Amen. They're pushing and pushing because nobody is stopping. Nobody even trying to kindle this flow. No. Nobody. But you like. Amen. Yes. You won't do so much. You talk to them. Uh, how in the world they letting us stay on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Don't you know that ain't but nothing but the mercy of God. Amen. I know they want us on. But every time they figure out how to maneuver to get, I ain't going to say they won't put us off. Now, I ain't going to say that. But everything's in the hand of God. If they put us off, it's because God has hardened his heart against those viewers and, and the people are not accepting the true message. That's why I shared the other day, uh, God said the, the people were a long time without a teaching preacher, without the truth. But they, when they in their trouble, they turned to God, it was heard of them. So again, as long as somebody is seeking after truth and righteousness, God always is going to have an avenue for them to find the truth. But somebody got to tell the people what to do. If everybody backs down and nobody holds on, mm -hmm. the people ain't going to be able to find nothing mm -hmm. but death and destruction. Yeah. So I thank God that he chose to like that. Oh, a lot again, when he made that decision and saw something, then God said, I'm going to deliver you and your family. But that test, that is always a test God gives somebody. All right, prophet, preach. Better listen to me. Yeah. All right. Always a test. Yeah. Whether well, it's third Sunday or the second Sunday in Atlanta, there's always a test. Amen. Amen. Well, it's pressing your way to church. Whenever the door is open, but it's just going to feel good. What you going to do? Lay down and turn on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise God. You can come to church. You can't lay down, but you can sit down. Amen. 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 Lot, when he understood it, Mm. All right. The angel said, now, here's a pathway to escape. Because we're getting ready to, we're getting ready to store it. this wicked city. Lot was headed toward freedom. But the angel said, now, wait a minute. Don't nobody look back. That was the test. The tree in the midst of the garden? Don't bother. That's your test. Eve. I ain't gonna say that because we gotta blame Eve on that one. Amen. Oh, I'm turning to feminist. No. no. Eve is the one who messed up big time. Now that now Adam didn't have no backbone. Because Adam could have told his wife, wait a minute here. <laughs> Stop this foolishness. You heard what God said. And no, he, he had a little girl in him too. <laughs> <laughs> He told you to open your mouth. Push that apple in his mouth. Amen. 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 I'm saying, whenever 
you come into righteousness, there always is a test to find out where your character is. Lot was told, don't look back. Now I said, Lot's wife, something back there, she wanted, didn't want to turn loose. The whole thing is, when God delivers you, you can't, you can't want nothing back. Well, maybe I'm too young. Uh, I'm missing a good time. I don't want to. I don't want to wear no long dress and, and wear head cover. And, uh, no makeup, no time. <laughs> well, if that's what you want, that's your test. Amen. So, not to hold what the angel told him. Now, whether he wanted to look back or not, one thing is for certain, he didn't look back. Amen. But his wife, no sooner as she got on a pathway to freedom, mm -hmm. she looked back. Mm -hmm. But that was a test. Yeah. Why? She left physically, but was a heart back there mm -hmm. in that mess. I don't know whether she's left again, but I know one thing, she's doing something wrong. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, not, I mean, God will never destroy nobody who have not gotten out of line after he said a warning. Amen. All right. He never call nobody to judge us in the warning. He never will call you to judge without a warning. Sometimes it comes to a physical sickness that you need God to step in. Amen. That's a warning. Amen. It can come in a home situation. It can come in a job situation. Yes. These are warnings. But God always promised to deliver if the person is upright before the Lord. Amen. That's why Hezekiah's testimony is so strong. Yeah. If when, when, when the problem was told, tell Hezekiah, get your house together, you're going to die. Amen. Hezekiah didn't talk to the prophet. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't talk to God. Yeah. What? He had a relationship. Yeah. He turned his face to the wall. Yeah. He wanted to black out everything that's going to distract me. What? I got to do a little praying here. I just feel a little talk here. You can already pronounce death on me. And I'm not ready to die yet. Something I got to do. And he talked to God. He said, wait a minute. Have I not? Well, up right before you, all of my appointed time. Yeah. God said, well, that's true. <laughs> now, I don't want to die. Amen. Amen. Lord. <laughs> Lord, hallelujah. God told that problem, wait a minute. Don't you leave yet. Turn around. Go back and tell my servant yeah. I heard his cry. Amen. Amen. I heard his cry. He's got no more given. 15 more years. Amen. That's a long time when you're supposed to die tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Lord. Amen. Time, God would have given us more time. Amen. Amen. He did what he had to do. Amen. Amen. I don't know what he had to do, but I didn't say. But something he had to do was important. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Church, always is a test. Mm -hmm. And then when you are faced with a critical situation, you can tell God, Lord, I lived all I know how. Amen. 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 I got right with it. I repent it. And the last teaching Jesus gave, a repentance and remission of sin. So you got to honor a repentant heart. Amen. You have to. Yes. Amen. So as long as someone is willing to humble himself, say, Lord, messed up, will you forgive me? Amen. God will forgive me. Amen. Amen. But you got to get intercessory prayer. This is what people don't realize today. I want to. James chapter 5. Amen. Amen. Jump right into verse 14. In among you sick. Oh, hallelujah. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of oh, faith. Uh, uh, what's that doc you see on TV? Dr. Uh, uh, ben, Dr. Ben Casey, uh, yeah. praise God. <laughs> so, the Bible should call for the elders of the church, which means the spiritual leaders Amen. in the various churches throughout the kingdom. Amen. Read. And let them pray over 
Abraham, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Yes. And the prayer of faith shall save yes. the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if the he prayer has of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord yes. shall raise him up. Amen. Something the preacher has to do. And then the Lord does the rest. The preacher anoints the Lord, but it's God who delivers. Verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that he may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I, I sprung in on a Baptist pastor one time. He just could not have it. He had to hang up the phone. <laughs> all, we're all the same. All of the sinners. We all filthy bad. Mm. Save our grace. Mm. I said, when you got part of the scripture right and part of it wrong, we ain't all the same. Amen. <laughs> the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, someone who's standing in the gap, he got to be living something for the Lord. Amen. Because if you need repentance and I need repentance, we and both of us in trouble. All right. All right. Somebody got to be living something. Oh, praise God. When we make up our mind, to walk upright before the Lord, then we can pray to God, and if you commit a willful act of sin, then God will intervene through the uh, messenger he has sent to anoint you with all and pray that intercessory prayer of faith. Amen. And then God does the rest. Amen. But somebody got to be living something for the Lord. Amen. When we follow God and the test comes, of our character, I'm talking about test of character, then we've got to learn how to put self aside, mm -hmm. self in the back, and that the Holy Ghost move the spirit man up to the front. And when the spirit man takes control, the physical man follows the spirit man because the spirit dominates the flesh. Amen. Amen. And then it will live by the flesh. How do they go? Romans uh, 8 chapter. Right at verse 7, the common mind is what an enemy against God. Amen. Romans 8 and verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God. The carnal not, mind is an enemy against God. For it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed See, can he, he can't follow when God told God. Mm -hmm. I'm delivering you. I, I, I go down here, but don't look back. God had something in him that caused him not to look back. But his wife didn't have that same thing in her. She looked back and was destroyed. So I'm trying to show you everybody has an opportunity to have the Spirit of God within. But if you allow for the flesh to tell you, well, no, I ain't gonna, I'm not going to, I ain't going to give all that now. I give all that now. I need something for myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but what? All right, Lord. Then you are discussing with the leader. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've taken too much authority, but I'm watching for your soul. Amen. Know that the labor among you. Yeah. I ain't taking it. And a uh, 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 by the yacht. All right. Mercedes. Yeah. That's right. Glory. I'm doing something with it. Amen. Amen. For the people. And when that billionaire God took his heart right, mm -hmm. he'll understand what I'm talking about. That's right, Father. Glory. You can take a dime in that casket with you. Amen. Hallelujah. And the very it's in, in a gold casket, like they did that preacher up in Detroit. Uh -huh. <laughs> gold casket. I, I know I saw it myself. Mm -hmm. Wow. Bishop Ellis. Mm -hmm. I saw it myself. I heard about it, but when I went to the funeral, I saw it for myself. Yeah. I said, why? Uh, for, for what? <laughs> what did it purpose? What did gold cash cost? 100000 200000 mm. I can use that money. That's right, Father. Amen. But it's in the ground. Mm -hmm. For what purpose? Worm don't need no gold. Mm. That's right. <laughs> Amen. And the worm going to eat you up. That's right. Glory, Father. <laughs> They don't eat no gold. <laughs> and they ain't got to go through no gold because your body automatically in that fermentation mm -hmm. turns to worms. That's right, Prophet. Sure does. That's the earthly body. Yeah, man. I'm saying, church, there's nothing you can take with you 
with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And that's all you need to take with you. Never set your affections on things beneath, but rather on things above. We got to keep our mind stayed on heavenly things. Mm -hmm. And if you're not working for the kingdom of God, right, start to get busy. Yeah. Start to get busy. Praise God. Uh, uh, Saturday, I went out there and uh, Elder Ricky out there passing our tracks. Mm -hmm. Amen. About 90 degrees out there, passing our track. Went to get in his car and the car wouldn't start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Called one of the preachers to come and get a jump. He out of town. Called up the preacher and, and uh, uh, I think he, his phone wasn't was on charge so he couldn't reach him. Called me and I pulled up and he said, I pulled up. Uh, well, I think uh, I jumped it. Yeah, you jumped Yeah. Mm -hmm. I ended up jumping the car. Yeah, yeah. Now he's out there doing something for the kingdom, getting his car. I won't stop. Amen. Oh, Lord, what did that do wrong? He did nothing wrong. Amen. Oh, it's a test. And when I found out that it wouldn't start and we kept trying and still wouldn't start, and pretty soon, we stayed right there. We didn't give up. Amen. Stayed right there. And next thing you know, stop. Amen. I just put out the ripple. I just put it all for the smile. What you saying? I didn't have to complain about the car wouldn't start, so the car wouldn't start. Amen. Sooner or later, it started. Yeah. Amen. God always is going to allow for testing trials to come. Yeah. We'll do it all. He'll deliver. Amen. If we're sincere. And if we learn how to pray from the fervency of an honest integrity within ourselves, that's when God is at his best. That's when God moves on our behalf. Yes. But never try to play half foot in yes. and half foot out. Half, a little bit, uh, I want just a little bit of this. We proved that with Ananias and Sapphira. All right. All right. And that's a tough, tough story to tell. Man. He was right. That was his house. He worked for that house. That didn't belong to Peter. And that's what he was telling Peter. Wait a minute here. You, 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 I work for this. This is mine. I'm going to give you a half. Because I want to be right. Peter's an I asked for all of them. I can't go that far. I go a little way with you. I go half with you. I ain't going all the way with you. No, I ain't going that far. I'm not foolish. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. And he, Peter got mad because he was trying to set an example and trying to build up the church. Once Ananias and Spies rebelled, what about the rest of them? Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I need a little something, too. <laughs> then what do you got? He ain't got no church. That's right. He got a bunch of people who won't say what they want to say and don't pay too much sense to what the apostles say. Right. So he said, let me set this thing right quick. Mm -hmm. Now, Pete, the Bible said he did it, and fear mm -hmm. came upon all the church. Yeah. Wow. I was just getting ready to, but. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God do it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You let somebody see. Right. So somebody can. Uh huh. <laughs> but you would get me. No, no I, I, I might have been thinking about it. I wouldn't think about it. Hallelujah. Well, I thank God for this <laughs> session tonight. Amen. And again, remember the story of life. Remember why we are separated. It's not to be mean, not to be evil, not to be, uh, well, we're better than them. Well, that's the wrong uh, connotation. We are better than them, according to the scripture. Yeah. God said, and I set his love upon us because we are more in number, because we are the fewest people on all the earth. Amen. Amen. He said, we love us because we are the fewest of all the people on the earth. I thank God that he has chosen us, set us apart, sanctified us, and brought us together to reflect his glory. I'm going to be happy.
Thank you so much for taking the time to hear the powerful word of truth from Prophet Bishop H. Walker. By way of special announcements, join Prophet Walker at True Life Pentecost Church every second Sunday of each month in Atlanta, Georgia at 957 Metropolitan Parkway at 4.30 p.m. Also join in with True Life every fourth Sunday of each month in Charlotte, North Carolina at 300 North Tryon Street located at the Public Library of Charlotte. For further details, go to www.truelightpentecost.org and click on announcements for any current events. Thank you so much for supporting Prophet Walker and the True Light Ministry. Be encouraged and be blessed. Blog Talk Radio.